Uh, I think, uh, although, I mean, uh, Dr. Saito failed in this case, we have seen, uh, you know, how, uh, you know, what is the experience. I think he has done so many, even worse CTOs over here, but one important thing is, you know, the most important thing is that he always cares and despite all this, he has a guts to quit at a point of time. And I think that is the major message, despite his experience, he is a world guru of CTO, but he has, you know, that uh, humility to quit at a time when, you know, he feels that it's not going to make, uh, you know, uh, hap it is not going to happen. So that was a major message in this case. And I really admire uh, and compliment Dr. Saito for this case. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Saito. Yeah, over to uh, North Lab. Coming to case number seven, a 69-year-old male, known hypertensive and diabetic, uh, TMT positive, history of old inferior wall MI, uh, PCI to RCA was done in 2017. Uh, at present, he is having mild LV dysfunction with ejection fraction 45%. Angio revealed heavily calcified 95% lesion in proximal LAD and 90% lesion in osteal OM. Syntax score is 12 and today's plan is PCI of LAD lesion using o o ROTA and or IVL under OCT guidance. These are the Angio views, this is the uh, right. This is the calcified uh, LED. And this is the OM. Over to the cath lab. Hello everyone, can you hear us? Yes, we can hear you well. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, so I'm, I'm here with uh, Sanjay, and we are going to go ahead and, and uh, do the PCI of this LAD. We just uh, did the fluoro. So we have a six wrench EBU three and a half. Let's go a little LAO, please. Again, we have a system which is the combo technique, and we will bring the guide right there. Pull back, IRV facility, and let's see. We'll try to engage. Okay, right there. Okay, we are proud. Yeah, we are in now. Good. Okay. So you saw the LAD fairly calcified, uh, heavily calcified, not fairly calcified. And um, we, our strategy is to. Uh, uh, okay. uh, our strategy is to first uh, rotor blade with a 125 burr. Very good. Full knuckle? Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. And then we'll do an OCT, size it, and um, can we open up the fluids? Can we throw it? So, let's see. Are we in? No, we're not in. How are they? Yeah. Okay. Ready? Mm. Okay. Uh, Pelacranial, and then we'll go to an you know, caudal and wire. Um, what do you guys think? Should we wire with? Uh, should we wire you know directly with uh, rota wire, or should we go exchange with a microcatheter? We're getting a little bit of ventricularization there. Dr. Sumit, the first thing is that why you are not predilating it and then doing an imaging and. Uh, then later on go for the rotablation because the 1.25 you are thinking, uh, why not it is 1.5? Uh, so again, as the Dr. Patel had mentioned earlier, you know, it's um, our experience that larger burrs are not necessary. Uh, we're just looking for some lesion modification. Uh, we'll probably find that this is a circumferentially calcified lesion and, you know, IVL is probably going to be the best modality. But uh, let me first try to wire with the rota wire first. I agree, okay. Sam. I think uh, trying to primarily wire this with a rota floppy, I think, is the quickest path to. Uh, right. It's a straight shot. You have a good, good guide, and you have yeah. the best skills either in your hands or in Sanjay's next door. Oh, thank you. Uh, we're going to ignore that diagonal. As you can see, it's 
almost total that the ostium probably is collateralized and I think the diameter is so small that if we try to attack that, we are probably going to complicate the outcomes of the LAD long term. So we will uh, selectively work on the LAD. I doubt that we will see any uh, action from the di diagonal. Well, so while you're doing that, can I go back to that 1.25 versus 1.5 question? Um, do you think there's a downside in going 1.5 from, uh, from a safety standpoint? I don't think there's a downside. I think that, you know, the segment is rather long, so one of the potential downside is the uh, occurrence of no reflow, although I agree that 1.5 is not a, you know, dangerous strategy. I think it can be done. Oh. But, you know, 125 is uh, a little gentler on the vessel and our, our goal is to basically deliver a good balloon there so that we can eventually, uh, uh, cranial, so that we can eventually fully expand that stenosis. Yeah, so, uh, uh, so that's kind of the logic for that and as you can see the rotor wire is uh, moving the tip uh, floor up. I mean, yeah, there we go. I'll pull back a little. I think there are uh, no risk. I, I highly recommend to do the 1.5 rotabulator because 1.25 sometimes have a risk of um, stuck, right? If the calcium is so strong, right? That is true. Uh, and like I said, I don't uh, see a major downside for any of this. But, uh, you know, we have, I think we have opened, uh, do we have the bar open or not yet? What do you think, Sanjay? One, two, five, okay, one, five. Uh -huh. One, five. Let's take one, five. We'll take your, uh, you know, recommendation. Sam, one more thing just to point out. Uh, you know, ten years ago, we'd see a pacing wire in the picture here. Um, but now, um, your comments, I mean, how often are you putting a pacing wire in? I will tell you, um, for us, it's pretty much zero now. Yeah, for us, it's also zero. We instruct the patient to cough, when, you know, when we ask them to if we see long you know, pauses and almost always we are able to have them cough through the asystole you know, phase. So I have not put a pacing system for road ablation in a very, very long time. And neither have we treated them with aminophilin or anything. There was a phase where we used to pre-treat them with aminophilin before road ablator. Uh, we have you know, abandoned both. Uh, and I think the reason for that is our, our strategy is more lesion modification rather than debulking. Oh. You know, the only time I, I, I have, have had to debulk is when the calcium thickness is very, very significant on OCT, uh, which is fortunately not that common. And since IVL has been available, we have even stopped doing that. So as you can see, we have the uh, old Rotoblader system, which I absolutely love, compared to the Rota Pro, which we only have Rota Pro now in, in the US, but um, I think the foot pedal has a lot to be said about. What do you think, Rajiv? What's your favorite, the new one or the old one? No, I'm so glad you said that, Sam. I thought I was the only person, and I'm getting older, but I missed the foot pedal. Yes. Um, I, you know, there's some uh, monosynaptic reflex. When you're doing a road ablation, you see a problem, your foot immediately comes off that pedal. With the button, it takes like five synapse connections in your Second. brains to press that button. It is very true. So now, I'm, I'm, I'm here. Yeah. So we have chip clip here. So where is the foot pedal gone? Hmm? Thank you, thank you. Okay, all right. Let's Dynaglide to make sure that uh, our but nitrogen's connected. And it is out on the dinoglide there. Okay. Now that, that, that you know that just gives me good confidence that the gas pressure is good and it's turning on and off. The button on the foot pedal is dependent on the pressure of gas. Now we're gonna spin the burr and set a you know, are we all connected and everything? Good. Okay. So we are at one fifty five. One of the purposes to do this is to de-air the system, so 150. And then can you bring the black uh, uh, thing, one finger breath in, just from the back. No, only, only okay. one finger breath in. Anapachi, okay. tight. Yeah, make that tight. And, okay. and then I'll show the, you know, younger folks why. 
So now we're going to bring this system in. By the way, for uh, all the younger guys, uh, rotoblader was invented by a physicist, not a cardiologist. Mm -hmm. His name was David Ott. And he started a company called Heart Technology in the late uh, 80s. And uh, around 94 or so, he sold it to what is now Boston Scientific. It used to be SciMed. Now, what Sanjay Bhai do is doing here is amazingly uh, good here. So we'll park the burr here. And now, uh, what I recommend is the same person who is uh, working the burr work the wire and bring the burr by milking the wire into the uh, artery. Uh, just one second. I'll defeat the TUI. And, uh, yeah, we'll straighten it out. And now we're in. And uh, we're going to bring the burr in a landing zone that's reasonably safe. Uh, a puff up, gentlemen. And then we'll take a puff, make sure we're not in a crazy spot. What do you think? That's good there, right? Mm -hmm. And Sam, your brake defeat is uh, fixed off right now on the back end with the right hand, the brake, the black button. Yeah, so not the black button. If you can show the black button here, please. Oh, yeah. So we were one finger breath in. And uh, now we're going to undo that and pull back. And that makes the burr lose all the stored torque. Then I defeat the TUI and I jiggle the catheter. And that removes all the forward torque. And then we step on the burr and burp it. And you can see it moved a little forward even, even with that. So now, we're gonna go, now, now we want to go, go, go forward and, and peck and short burst six to eight seconds. It's very different from uh, orbital atherectomy where we do sustained and non-pecking movement. And as you can see, with the 1.5, the crossing is going to take a little bit of time. We are listening for the deceleration, and we don't want to decelerate heavily there. So uh, short pecking movements. And some you're 160,000? We are about yeah, 150 or around there. Just one second, let me adjust my floral pedal. Samir, how much, is the, how much is the deceleration? Uh, we are hardly getting any because we are short. Now we have crossed the lesion, as you can see. And so now we can polish and uh, use some of the wire biasing on the inner diameter of the vessel and remove some more plaque. Mm -hmm. So I do it about three, four times after it looks like it's all futile. And uh, even then you get a little more debulking. Uh, and then after that we'll dynaglide and remove this burr. Don't forget to store fluoro, Sam. We usually forget that. Yes, uh, let's store one of these fluoros so down the road we can tell that we did rotoblader. Yes, yeah, store. Uh, okay, so dinoglide is now on, and I will go on fluoro and step, and it removes the friction, and so it's a nearly frictionless removal of the burr. The only problem with dinoglide is that the burr will never decelerate; it'll only jack up the power. So using dinoglide going forward could be dangerous. Now my guide's not exactly coaxial, so I am going to try to reposition it a little bit and see if it gets better. Ready? Let's take a picture. Yes. Better. So it looks nicer, right? Yes. Looks, definitely looks nicer. So yeah. you're, you're now going to just parallel wire with the workhorse? Yes. So we're going to take a 0 and 4 workhorse wire. Um, as you all know, the rotor wire is a 330 centimeter wire with the radio opaque tip is 014 and the rest of it is 009. The burr moves over the 009 segment and in the rare case that the burr falls off, it will be trapped by the uh, radio opaque segment. So you can literally pull the burr back 
unless you break the radio opaque segment off. Any comments about road ablation uh, beyond what we just discussed? No, it was, it was a fantastic demonstration of a safe road ablation, a re really great demonstration. One, one question, a theoretical question for you, Sam. What if this was, uh, if you were really struggling to cross? Right. Your next step would be to increase the uh, burr speed or would you, would you downsize the burr? So there are two things. When your burr does not cross, always think of your guide support because the, the forward energy in this burr is so high that it should fly through most of these lesions eventually. So if you're not crossing, that means your, your support from the guide is, is extremely poor. And so I would re-examine the guide. I actually kind of uh, removed the guide and uh, you know, succeeded after putting a better guide catheter. So that's my run through and then I will remove the rotor wire in a second. And very important here, because you're through a calcified lesion, don't just pull the wire ramming out. You will dissect the left main, remove it gradually and uh, easily. And now we have the run through in there. So one, one additional point, at least uh, from, from the theory and, and also in the US boards, is that increasing the burst speed will narrow the we'll circumference we'll of the cut the and will increase your chance of crossing a lesion. So it does. So yeah. we sometimes you know, take it up to 180 or 200 for a short period to try Absolutely. and Absolutely. It also increases the heat. And so uh, you know, we tend to work at 150s. And Jerry Barbo from Quebec City actually works at 110 to 120. Uh, and he gets away with much longer passes without causing uh, a lot of trouble. So, uh, you know, I think it's all stylistic, but uh, at the end of the day, you want to cross. And uh, we're now going to put an OCT catheter in. There's a little bit of left main disease here, so I'm a little concerned about that. But Sanjay Bay is injecting, so I'm not worried too much. I recently saw a case where the OCT injection led to a dissection from left main down to the mid to distal LAD. So again, uh, let's see the pressure, just one sec. Okay, so better pressure now. And ready? Okay, let me know and we'll just, we'll just fluoro save instead of Cine, right? Okay. Ready? Okay, ready? Ciao. Nice. Save that fluoro, please. Sam, one minor discussion point. Uh, I mean, obviously, no, you, you don't need this as your, in your expertise, but sometimes uh, we'll leave the rotor wire down if we parallel wire, just in case your new wire has caught a dissection plane. Exactly. Um, yeah, do you ever true. do that? Yes, so we, I do it for two reasons. One is that, and the other one is if I need extra support tracking through you know, calcified segments. Sometimes in the right coronary and circumflex, you need a buddy wire, and rotor wire could act as a buddy wire. Mm. So you can see the OCT, and I know Dr. Akasaka is in the, in, on the panel, so yes. we will ask him to give us an opinion. And to me, it looks like it's uh, all the five rules, are, the rule of fives are satisfied here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we have a... Yeah. Yes. There are lots of calcium and some parts are circular, but uh, uh, the lumen size is enough, so it is important to use uh, IVL in this case. Yep. Yes. Yep. yep. So I'm going to remove the OCT catheter. Okay. And so typically, uh, Samir, you are going for a rotatripsy, right? Yes, rot rot yeah, rotatripsy. So we live in an area in America where uh, we have the second highest density of uh, very old people. And so calcium is like 80% of my you know, work. And uh, about 30-40% of the time we do rotatripsy. Uh, what's our reference lumen diameter of the LAD by OCT? Yeah, this tall is 2.8 five in diameter, right? Okay, right. And proximal might be uh, uh, three, three point one seven, right? So, so what do you think? 2.5? 2.5. 2.5 uh, shockwave balloon is a good choice, you think? Yes, yes. Yep, okay. So I, I, I agree with that. I think we're going to go with a, with a 2.5 IVL balloon. Okay. Huh? 
You have to look out the, the catheter because some ventricularization is there. Yes, we are. Uh, so we are trying to ad address it and I think, you know, there is some left main disease and let me pull back a little. It settles in every time I do a catheter exchange. So now I'm out of the left main. I just want to ask Dr. Akasaka again. He made a really great point earlier on. We, we used to say the OCT of the osteo left main is not possible. Uh, because your guide needs to be disengaged, but you can use a guide extension catheter like a guide liner. The OCT will see through the walls of the guide liner. Yeah, right, 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 right. Medscape uh, is the, the best to, to see, right? And also, another technique is uh, wire to the aorta, and if you put uh, the, uh, the guiding catheter just at the orifice, right? And uh, push in uh, uh, the yeah, power, uh, with power, at the contrast to the left main, we can see the orifice, right? Yeah. The question, Dr. Dr. Akasaka, are all guide extenders able to show you the outside vessel with no, uh, no. OCT? No, we cannot see it by guide zilla. Uh, guide zilla is not, right? No, no. So guide liner and the telescope are guide both telescope, good? Yes, yes. Okay, that's good to know. I didn't know that till now, actually. Sometimes even for the osteo, the right coronary is a very good, uh, you know, adjunct. Sam, as you look at this diagonal, are you, are you tempted? Uh, I know I have learned from Tejas that diagonals are only there for annoyance. And the more you ignore them, the better your outcomes are. <laughs> I, I used to, from my fellowship training, I would have wired it and worked on it, etc. But now, the, now we have plenty of proof that it's, uh, it's better to just leave him be. I'm sure that that tight diagonal is probably collateralized. Release. Now, IVL, I think, is one of the most Im impressive advances in uh, coronary intervention since probably since stenting. Would you guys agree? I think, yes, it, it's a very uh, wonderful technique, right? It's an amazing uh, yeah. lesion modifier. Yes, yes. I, and, and it's fairly low risk uh, overall. Yes. The, the other operations uh, uh, you did in the rotavator or orbital right. atelectomy uh, may have uh, some risk to make a perforation or we have to uh, have a good technique. So it takes I'm a little bit time to, to, to familiar with the system, but uh, uh, how we are is very easy to, to, to uh, treat uh, the region. Yeah, I completely agree. I think okay. the major benefit of IVL is its safety profile. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I don't think it's as efficacious as, as uh, well, there's no head-to-head, -head, but you still sometimes need proper debulking devices. But the key thing with IVL is that you basically won't get a perforation. Yeah. I think an IVL catheter with a scoring system on it would be ideal. Mm -hmm. So it's not tracking. Okay, yeah. No, let me see. Yeah, yeah guide, guide was outside, so that's why I think I have to engage it. Uh, Now it went. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, only the limitation uh, of the IVL yeah. is uh, that the Go balloon ahead. is very bulky and difficult yeah. to push in sometimes. Uh, just one second. So. Let me, yeah, the catheter is not very friendly yet, but I'm sure the next few iterations, just one second. One, one, uh, epicordal uh, epicordal uh, yeah. one tip we learned with, with the IVL, because it's so expensive, if you want to use it in a second vessel, then you need to rewrap that balloon, and so you should keep the uh, initial mandrel that it comes oh, with yeah, to use yeah, it to yeah, rewrap yeah. the IVL. Let's go balloon. cranial, please. Yeah, yeah I think I, I have to say that I wish it was more successful than what it is. Uh, or maybe I was hoping, you know, do you think we start here? Or, yes. Right? Because I think there is calcium all the way from there, yes. From normal to normal. Not, so yeah, I think I would go even a little further. Okay. It will go right there, okay. 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 Let's go there, yeah. Because, go he, because you have eight shots. So yeah, you can yeah we have go plenty of shocks here. Ready? So save that, Floro. It's pretty well expanded there. And we'll take the post 10 pulses. We'll take another quick Floro. And let's see. Just one second. Okay, save that. And, and we'll come down. Sam, I'm sure you know that they, in the U.S., each IVL is $4,700. Yeah, although so we have a pass-through code, right? We so do now, but I, uh, each pulse is $80. Yeah. <laughs> <Each pulse. laughs> 
Uh, let's go up there, yeah. Yeah, the, the, luckily $60, Medicare... $60, sorry. You know, Medicare has given... Save that for you. Yeah. Medicare, you know, gave them the uh, pass-through code, which means it's innovation which is, uh, you know, unique. And so they get... Uh, ready? Achha. Samir, how many of uh, IVLs you use for calcific lesions? How many? I do almost two or three a week. Oh, oh, oh. and since how long? Uh, since it came out. Oh, then it is a huge experience. Yeah, we, we are very old people, so uh, the calcium is not, it's not coming back. I just have to use the wire to push it back a little bit. One of the other big benefits psychologically for the operator is that you can have yeah, two wires remember, in the vessel for IVL. Yeah, I, I, I so like know, distal left I, main, yeah, let's, let's you can keep there. a wire in the circumflex, unlike with, uh, of course, the regular with arthrectomy. Yeah, okay, so uh, let me save that fluoro. Yeah, good, yeah. Yeah, I think this is a much easier device to deal with. I mean, I, I trained in the directional coronary arthrectomy days, and uh, it doesn't compare. Oh, we have a balloon rupture. Yes. IVL balloon rupture. Ah, oh. I, IVM balloon. Oh. Okay, uh, let's come out and uh, see what it did. Hopefully nothing bad. So is there a calcific nodule there? Probably there is a spicule that the 1.5 didn't take off even. Okay, let's see. Yeah, I have to say, this is the second balloon rupture in IVL that I have faced, and we, we use two, two or three every week, and it's really interesting. Just one second. Okay, let me pull the wire back. You, let's take a shot, huh? Wire. Mm. Yeah. Well, but wire, yeah. I think it looks good. Doesn't look too, too bad, right? It mm. looks good, actually. It looks good. I mean, there's an area of dissection, of course, that we'll need to yeah, cover. And, uh, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Should we stent or should I we, you know, should we dilate the, the area between the two diagonals? I think if the stent goes in... Uh, First stent and then deal with it. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, worst I, case I, scenario, we can put a 3O or 3.5 IVL <laughs> catheter inside the stent if yeah. it doesn't expand. But I think it will expand. don't you like to see how much crack it has done? Mm -hmm. How much what? Cracking? How much crack it has done by this time? Because uh, you didn't get put, you couldn't put that too much pulses there. No, uh, we got three or four, pu you know, uh, trains done. So I think you know, we, we, I think we got forty pulses in, right? Forty. Yeah. I, yeah. So, uh, so I think you know, I would probably just go and stent now. I think so. so I would, uh, yeah, I would yeah, put, yeah, put yeah, a long yeah. stent in now. You deliver the IVL balloon, which means a stent shouldn't have so too much uh, problem. There, there is some easiness at left to an ostium. There is actually a bunch Postal. of yeah. There is a bunch of plaque there. In fact, there is about a that is also significant calcium, I suppose. Yeah, there is lesion there, so we are very careful not to dislodge it. Uh, we are intubating it, and luckily we are getting away with it. But uh, what's our distal reference vessel size by OCT, guys? Two point five. Two point five. So do you want to do you want to start with a two five stent, and then we'll post dilate higher, right? I think... Uh, or 275 stent. Yeah, 275. 275 is better. Uh, uh, two, two, uh, yeah. uh, uh, what do you think? Alpine will go in? I, I think it will go in. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Which length? Uh, what was our lesion length of by OCT? We have the benefit, so we'll use that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, normal to normal was... Uh, yeah. LAD ostium is there. Yeah, we have a lot of rooms inside the yeah, LAD ostium. Okay, come back, come back. Come back a little bit. Okay, okay, okay this is fine. Yeah, fine. yeah. No, no, go in a little bit. Okay, fine. This is okay. It's all over, there is calcium. So, chal fata fat come. Yeah. Pro Proximal is, is 3.4, right? 5. So... 15. So, so then two cents. So then it is a good idea to go with two stents. So 275, 38 we take, right, first? 275, 28. 28, okay, yeah. 28. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to take two stents. Yeah, then, then, then we'll, we'll take two anyway, so it's not a problem, yeah. 275, 28 to be good. This is a LAD, so here sizing is, we're not as worried as the circumflex, which magnifies because it's more posterior vessel. For, you know, for the, again, for the fellows, uh, circumflex is uh, at the back of the heart and because the x-ray comes from the posterior to the anterior direction, the 
magnification of circumflex is the highest out of all three coronaries. So when you're sizing, you have to factor that in. LED is anterior, it is farthest from the X-ray source and closest to the screen or the II. And so it is uh, better to go ahead and uh, size it one to one as your eyes tell you. Hello. Sir, uh, the size of the left main looks like the same as that of the LED. So don't you think left main is quite significant? Left main is diseased for sure, but it doesn't look obstructive. Surendra, the left main is diseased, but it is a heavily calcified artery. Yeah. So uh, we don't expect, you know, any, uh, any acute thing to happen by and large. Okay. So some two reasons why I like the fact that you put the shorter stent in first. Yeah. Number one is more yeah. deliverable for distal. Right. And number two, you won't double jail that Hello. diagonal if ever in the future you need to come back. Okay. Ready? I think we come back even a dart or two, you think? Or since it's okay. Yeah, since it we don't okay. want to it's double okay. jail. Yeah, this yeah, yeah. is good. Let's just go up here. Okay. Right, Kilu? Yeah. 14. All right. Mm. Yeah, to your point, Raji, we I would deploy here so we don't double cover the diagonal. Your train is also. Yeah. Yeah, I think it looks pretty darn good size uh, for the vessel. This looks fine. Yeah. I want 10. We can withdraw a little bit after after depleting. Yeah. Then we can go in. Come down. Just push a 10 and then come back. Just one second, I want to just stay just Sine. inside stand, yeah. Sine. 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 Just in a green juju. A little further, right? Yes. Little yeah, bit further. It's okay. It's okay here? Okay, so uh, let's see. We are going to yeah. uh, stand it. We're just going to go higher pressure inside 15, this. 15, 15. Yeah. Oh, Dukesh, yeah? Right. He's hurting, yeah. Down? Good. I think that's plenty size. Now we will see what the next length we want. So, just a second. And I think, yeah, puff there, please. Hmm. Little, bit, okay. little further back, right? Yes. Uh, okay. No, this is uh, Australia already. Huh? It's almost at the os, right? So we need to go in a little, right? Hmm. Let me engage properly first. That way. Yeah. Let's take a picture here. I think it's too far back, so I'm so we have uh, coverage almost under the diagonal. And this was a twenty eight, right? So what what size next do you think? Yeah. Yeah. Can we plan from Lipman Ostium? No, no, no. no, I think the left main is hopefully fine and we're going to leave it be as our original strategy. I think that's a, we can probably even shave off 2-3 millimeters approximately, mm -hmm. right? 18, so, 18, 18, 18, 18 should be good. 3.5? 3, 3 mm. 5, 18, right? The proximal yeah. is 3 point, uh, yeah, proximal is 3.5 is okay, right? 3.5, yeah. Yeah, diameter is 3.4, yeah. right? Therefore, yes. 3.5 is okay. Yes. 3.5 is good. 3.5. Okay. Yeah. Wire thodo paacho lelu, ana catheter Okay. pressure We don't need it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. Good. So our next catheter is three. I mean, stent is three five eighteen. Zions. Uh, 
I got it, yeah. Okay, I got to coaxialize the ca guide. So, right there. Okay, uh, just one second. Yes. 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 Right? This is perfect. I think we'll go. We already see overlap here, so we're going to go. Go ahead. Mm. Okay. Ready? Mm. Ten. Ten, yeah. And uh, save that floor. We we'll go 15 seconds or so. We'll come down. We'll go a little bit in and then inflate higher, right? Okay. Right. Ready? Yeah. Okay. We're deflating. Okay, we are inside stand. Okay, we're going to go up here. 10, 12. Okay. How much? 14. 14? Yeah, that's cool. Okay, save that floor. Good. Okay, we, I think we have plenty of expansion. We'll do OCT mm. next, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, I will come out as soon as the balloon is down and my two is defeated. Wire is in. All right. Good. Okay. Little pressure issue, but wire. Yeah. Okay. Ready? Mm. Okay. Sine. Fine. Okay. OCT. Let's do OCT. It's looking fantastic already. Um, it looks pretty decent. Yeah. Yeah. We'll OCT this and see what happened. The diagonal has sluggish flow, but we'll. We knew that was going to happen and it's probably, like I said, non-angiographically collateralized. Okay, I got the wire. Because there is no action here of anything else. How are these? Is there a slack? Center. Okay, wire back. So again, we are using that simultaneous advancement technique where I'm pulling the wire back and then advancing both at the same time. Mm -hmm. And let me come further a little bit, wire in. And um, I think we are good there. We what do you across. say? Yes, we are across. Yeah, I'm across and we'll work on the distal part of the stent a little more. Okay, ready? Okay, do we want to do 75 cent? Yeah, 75, right? Let me know when you're ready. Okay. Ready? Ready? Fine. Good. Okay. Excellent. I will disengage the guide. Okay. Here is a distal landing zone, right? Uh, no dissection and the position is very good. Round shape. The symmetricity is also the very good. I, at the moment, I could not identify any under expansion. Here also, yes, very good expansion, right? So far, yeah. yeah. Now that 64 percent. What does that mean? If you can explain no, on no, the no, yes, it, 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 the uh, the automatical yes measurement uh, divided the two part, right? Mm -hmm. So you can change the, the the distal part. They divided the uh, yes in the mid portion. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, okay. That that's the reason why the 64 percent. I'm afraid. Okay. Red purple. Red purple. 
pocket. Uh, so tell us again, can you change that branches, distal reference lumen? Yeah. Can you change that percentage right. by changing the reference? Yeah. That is okay. Branch. So those two little red markers are a sign of under expansion, but as we saw by twisting the axis that, you know, one of them was at least at a branch and the other one might also be at a smaller branch that we are probably not seeing longitudinally. What do you guys think? Do you think we are good? We are done? Yeah. yeah. I think we are done. You know, if he continues to have symptoms, I would FFR the left main down the road, but I'm going to pull wire and catheter. And uh, let's see if we get images. Even if we don't, we are okay. Since we have been imaging, we are doing less uh, post-wire, you know, angiograms. Yes. Go ahead. Puff, what can you Let's see. Okay, ready? Yes. Okay, AP cranial. Okay. And AP caudal. Okay. Ciao. I, I think it looks fantastic. You're speaking on behalf of us here. Congratulations on a great case. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, guys. Ah,